What it do, what it do, it's your boy Low Key, artist and producer for Nashville, Tennessee. You are now in the tool in a real talk. My boy Low Key, man, what's going on, Brody? What it do, what it do, man, what it do? What's up? Man, I'm glad we got you here on Real Talk, man. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Glad to be here, man. Nah, that's what's up, bro. So, before we go ahead and get all the way into, like, the music and, you know, like, what's going on with Low Key and everything now, we got to talk about Low Key then. Yeah, what's up? So, let's go ahead and go, like, to the beginning, bro. Give me back to the basics, bro. Like, where you from, man? Man, I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Born here and raised, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah, straight, straight from the soil, baby. You know okay. Yeah. So, being out in Nashville, like, how has it been, like, you know, for you to grow up out here in this area? Oh, uh, man. It's been... It's been life, been up and down, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's been, um, of course, everything got its hardships. It got its uh, successful moments, its failures and everything like that. But it's been, it's really been a mixture of both, you know what I'm saying? I can't really say I've been on one one side more than the other. Mm -hmm. I've been, uh, I felt everything. So Nashville for me, in one word, has been home. Mm -hmm. I said that, comfortable, yeah. That's good, that's good. So, so I was, but since you have been here and everything, so from birth to now and everything, I'm pretty sure you're kind of like seeing like the like, the whole change have yeah, you been, you've been yeah, seeing like the yeah, whole yeah, shift yeah, yeah. so i wanted to have you kind of speak on that like do you kind of like are you welcoming of the gentrification shift or like how are you feeling about like that because i've been hearing kind of mixed opinions because mm -hmm. now it's like apparently a lot of landmarks and things that you guys hold near and dear to like native nashville so they're, they're taking away. yeah they're taking yeah, away yeah, the yeah, uprooting yeah. all that stuff and making everything new so like be, you being a native and everything like how is like that whole gentrification process on you uh for me it's like man um it's not really good for me because I know what it's directed towards yeah. the community, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, I really don't take too kind for that, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But I do understand things, things do change, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Can't understand the same, you know what I'm saying? I do, I do have the mindset of business too, being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Things got to change, you got to be able to scale up things, mm -hmm. you know, tourists and everything like that. You want to have a city, a place where people can come and be free and feel, and feel free, you know what I'm saying? Feel mm -hmm. whole. But... Aside from that, it's, it's the downside, like I said, the good and the bad with the first question. You know what I'm saying? You got to push people away. They, right. It's been here. They, they grew up with generations and generations. So for me, it's like, um, what, 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 what part are you going to take uh, more in vain? You know what I'm saying? The love mm -hmm. and what you already got set in stone? Or are you going to try to build something different? Or who would say it won't even be destroyed then? You know what I'm saying? Facts. So, yeah. Because that's always a good way to look at it, too, because it's like that also does bring better opportunities and stuff to the city because it's like it does take like i feel like in a way what they could have done is not uproot historic landmarks or anything sure. that actually meant something to the cities and sure. natives of nashville yeah. but other cities because there's so much green grass out here i'm yeah, yeah. I, it's, it's nashville bro it's land yeah, yeah. you know yeah, yeah. so i'm like they could have just you know put it in different areas you know that's why i was kind of looking at it like that too but i also understand like you said on the business thing yeah. they're trying to bring more tourists in and exactly. you know tourists want to be downtown exactly. so and, they, and, and the thing with that too is like Shit, um, damn, I had a thought. The <laughs> thing about that, it's like, um, so it, it's, it's usually a lot of people that's coming from outside of Nashville that's doing it. It's not even people that's inside of Nashville. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the people making the deals that's in Nashville, but the influence is coming from outside of Nashville. So it's what people are looking at on the outside and bringing it to the inside. Mm -hmm. So that's never really a good mixture anyway. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So yes, that's, that's, basically, that's basically what I see it as. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if we had like, if we had more of us, you mm -hmm. know, putting the influence into it, it would, it would look way different. You know what I'm saying? Because it'd be our vision, but it's their vision. So why do you feel like it's not more of us? I'm not trying to hit that. I feel like I could, I know exactly what answer I'm finna get. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to phrase it in a way, um, so it's not too easy for you saying. But do, is there a way why you feel like uh, there's why us as a community aren't really putting more of a uh, of a, a proactive attitude to like make help develop them not develop the changes but kind of like censor the changes so like you know like you're saying like in certain communities like we can make sure stuff's not happening here mm -hmm. but we're not speaking up about that type of stuff we're kind of like just rolling with whatever the, the punches are mm -hmm. why do you feel like we're not going to town hall meetings and speaking up and stuff as a community saying like all right well this is our city too we yeah. play a part here you know what i'm saying we pay taxes you know rent and everything so why can't we still keep our section of the community stuff like that have you guys ever had any kind of like looks on like why you guys like not why you guys but why like mm -hmm. nashville as a whole the black community hasn't kind of like said those words or anything or has that been done i'm not from here so i, I don't, don't i don't i don't think it has been done but one thing i can say like what i have noticed i noticed this year people are afraid to speak, speak mm -hmm. up, you know what i'm saying like when it, even when it's a question of something directed towards you you know what i'm saying like people are kind of 
tone your energy down, but like, no, nah, that's when you gotta bring it up, and don't be scared to bring it up. Mm -hmm. So, it's really, it's really to me, it's about not knowing our energy, not knowing, not knowing uh, our voice, not mm -hmm. knowing that we really matter. You know what I'm saying? Because we look at it like, oh, they building this, they building that, they doing this, they doing that. You know, without our consent anyway, or they doing things mm -hmm. in the everyday without a, without our consent. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, I guess it become a normal thing. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It become the normality of thing of your mind. You know what I'm saying? So once you program in a certain way, you always gonna think like that. You know what I'm saying? So, like, uh, I feel like it's the programming. Like we don't have the programming like they did back in the nineties. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Sure. To, to be about your shit and build upon it. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And do it for self. You know what I'm saying? But well, we need. That's what we need more of. And I and, and I, I, ain't, I ain't just trying to go to like in the whole like it's this this versus this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because that's how they want you to look at it. Exactly. But, but it's more of a. Uh, capitalist communism type thing, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. the politics is more of a fi financial thing. Yeah. Like if we have more of a financial, that's that's where the power will come. As you know, as you can tell, the the power is not really in a, in a voice as much. Mm -hmm. It's all because because a voice can only make so much certain, happen. Yeah. And but certain, if you got that money moves. to follow it, yes, yes, you can you can invest to it. Mm -hmm. and you can invest in your voice. You know, they put your money where your mouth is. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Yeah. Facts. So, yeah, that's dope, bro. I, I had to ask you, bro, because you know what I'm saying? You being a no, native here, and I'm yeah. seeing the changes and only kind of hearing. I've only been in Nashville for five years myself. Yeah. So, like, me just seeing what I'm seeing from now, like, I, TSU, we seeing Jefferson Street kind of, like, go from across the street. Like, they were actual homes, and now yeah, it's, like, yeah, yeah. those duplexes and stuff. And we're like, dang, they, they just said, all right, cool. We, yeah, we, yeah, we, we moving down. Yeah, we right here. Yeah. I'm like, I wonder if they get uh, discounts on tuition or whatever yeah, now. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm yeah. like... But I'm seeing that, and a lot of people were telling me, like, no, nah, I never was like that. Like, Jefferson Street used to be super black. Like, mm -hmm. it used to be, like, sure. a lot of black-owned businesses, like, mm -hmm. all down there. And me not being from here, I wouldn't know and stuff yeah. until so I did the Jefferson Street Parade. I kind of, like, got to actually see the whole so, community. Super dope. So. Super dope, man. Yeah. Um, and I really love the community just because I was able to, like, partake in certain um, events mm -hmm. and stuff like that. The African uh, Festival. Loved it. Yeah. Um, so it's like seeing that, I'm like, man, that gentrification thing, it, it does disrupt a lot of things that were so, positive, you so. know? So I'm like, I do hope that, you know, the gentrification does not really take over the whole city. Yeah, you know, because it's like certain things that I was able to experience, not even being from here, not knowing that I was even here to experience, yeah. and me able to actually experience them. I had the best time. Um, the, I love the city, honestly, and the black community. I do feel like they're here and they're like they're present, right. but like you're saying, we just got to speak up. For sure. So, but definitely dope, man. Definitely dope, man. Yeah. But you being out here in Nashville, man, let's go ahead and get into the music, bro. Mm -hmm. So, like, tell me, like, what you, you produce, you make music. So, like, what kind of, like, made you get into it? I know Nashville is music city <laughs> capital. So, like, go ahead and tell me something, bro. Uh, man, for me, uh, it started with my family. Mm -hmm. So, my family, they had um, they had a record label called Glue, Ryan Like You Wine Entertainment. Oh. So, oh. like, uh, so they had they had my, uh, my, my uncle, his name was Cash Vice. Mm -hmm. He was an artist. He was on Billboard and stuff like that. They put him to Billboard to where he was almost like up there with Jay Z, Mary J. Blige. Oh yeah, so, straight straight from Nashville. Yeah, they running it straight from Nashville. You got so, legends in here. Nobody <laughs> don't even know it. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it kind of it kind of started from that. Mm -hmm. And then like just me being around an area. I remember I went to the studio one day and I just went in there. I was like, what is feel? It's like you know when when you when you connect when you and some connect in the universe, mm -hmm. it gives you this feeling of, of maybe passion, inspiration. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I made it halfway, and it was like, man, this is this is something that I, that I want to do. I ain't even know I wanted to do it. Like, when I said I was nine, I was like in an AMC theater yeah. parking lot. I come up in my head, I was like, I'm a rap. I'm, I'm going to be a rapper. <laughs> but then as I got older, it's like, no, I want to be an artist. Because mm -hmm. the more I began, I, I began to uh, have conscious of more stuff that's going on around me, like, I want to talk about this. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about what they're talking about. Even, even it's, it's a difference between my music and their music too, my mm -hmm. family music too, you know what I'm saying? So it really, it's, it's, it's on both sides, my mom's side and my dad's side, they all musical influential too, so it all grew up from there. Okay, yeah. so yeah, music is deep in the family yeah, roots for sure. then. For sure. That's dope. And I, I like that you just said you got music that's different from your family, but you also just said something that I wonder if um, a lot of other people have thought about this, but you, you said a rapper and an artist, have, do you see a difference between the two? For sure, I feel like, um, they're both for entertainment, but mm -hmm. I feel like a rapper is just categorized in hmm, just being they have this cap. They got a cap, mm. you know what I'm saying, to what they put out. So for 
I'll say like a little baby and maybe a J. Cole or a Kendrick Lamar. Mm-hmm. Like the difference between these guys is like the creativity. Yeah. The creativity that's invested. Mm-hmm. An artist is like an artist that paint pictures and stuff like that. It takes time. Yes, yes. And like with other people like which is I'm not I'm not down to nobody anything like yeah, that, you know what I'm saying? Sure. But you, you can tell like this person is kinda consistent with the sound. Mm-hmm. So he just that, that, that that's that's what his rapper cap is. That's what I call it a rapper cap. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then and then with the artistry, you can take it different ways. You know what I'm saying? It's like you got your big hitters like a Kanye mm. or, a, or a Dr. Dre and stuff like that because they put the artistry into it, right. which, is, which is more the motion, more the creative mindset into it. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just like rapping over something. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's the difference right there, the creativity, how much you invest into it. So do you think a rapper could be mimicked and the artist could be mimicked or do you think that you can mimic a rapper but not an artist? That's a great question. Uh, I think I think a rapper can be mimic, mm-hmm. not an artist. I don't think artist. I think the same. Yeah, because the artist got like a copyright. Yeah, you know they got the copyright sound, voice, tone, mm-hmm. delivery, and stuff like that, which which a rapper does too. Mm-hmm. But I feel like I feel like it's something that you graduate into. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You become a rapper first, then you graduate to open and experiment, trying different things. Yeah, you know maturing. Yes. You know. Yeah. And I look at that like a lot of the artists nowadays too. Like for instance, like when I um. Like everybody talks about Chief Keef and stuff from now. I was Chief Keef was a dope his age, but I was always like a G Herbo fan and mm-hmm. Lil Durk. So I always compare these two every day, and I still get into arguments till now. Like yeah. I really love Durk's music, mm-hmm. but he's not touching G Herbo. Like and it, it's only because of lyrically, like her. Like if you listen to him, how he talks, his storytelling. Like he matures. He talks about what he's going through with his kids and stuff. Dirk has done stuff, projects like that, mm-hmm. but to me, he makes relatable music and right. not like, mm, like motivational, like that preaching music, like that that real like I'm trying to paint this picture for to, for you. Like he give you a lot of relatable bars, just like Little Baby, and I love both artists. You know what I'm saying? But it's like something different to me when I can hear a song and feel it at the exactly. same time. Exactly. You know, and that's the type of music I love. Yeah, yeah. But um, no, like you said, bro, no, and definitely not speaking bad about them. You know, they're still great. But that rap cap, I do believe, like a lot of artists, they come into the game thinking like this is what I'm gonna do and this yeah, is it. That's it. Yeah. But you gotta you gotta be open to trying new things. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And, and another thing, I feel like the artists can know how to reinvent themselves. Mm-hmm. Like the artist is very very great at doing that. Cause yeah. It's not all. Yeah, you ain't gonna paint the same picture every time. You gonna paint different pictures. Exactly. You know what I'm that's what a lot of rappers do. They paint the same picture. Yeah. Like, just, just different perspectives. They talk about the same thing but different perspectives. But with artists, you can implement different things. You can even talk about that a little bit, but do it do it in a different way. It's gonna flow different. Come out different. Exactly, and I feel like you got a good like understanding of that too because you have the producer in you too mm-hmm. because you're able to kind of know like all right I could build something I I can I start here with a beat or a loop or however that starts I, you know I'm not an engineer but you can start from right here but you can expound on that and add more to make that beat yours yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I I really like because I've seen some like you know vlogs and stuff like interviews well, I mean like, um with producers and stuff and how they just kind of like interact with their artists they're not just there just hitting some keys and yeah, letting him yeah. do his thing like you guys actually kind of help them like flow on the beats that you guys yeah, make for sure, for sure. so is it like something like you have like a vision already like all right i got this beat for you you listen to somebody and is it like somebody like all right i, I want you on this beat but you got to come on it this exact way is it something like that or do you let them kind of like go first and then you kind of like be like all right let me help you like you know, flow on it. Like I want you to walk on this beat the right way, but we gonna we gonna do this. Like how do y'all how do you approach that? So it's like two different ways. Um, one way one way is the way that you said. Like you can uh, you can help them out, and the other way you can of course just let them do their thing. The first thing you always want to do because I was always artist first. Mm-hmm. You always want you always want the artist to let them do their thing first. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Let them flow. Let them let them get it out how they want to get it out. Freestyle a little bit, whatever they got to do. Let them get in the vibe. Let them get in the feel because the beat. It's already the story has been told. Just gotta add lyrics to it. Mm. That's it. You know what I'm saying? So, so the beat is already, already the movie. You know what I'm saying? The the, the voice and the vocals is, is the actors. Mm. It's, it's, it's corresponding in the movie. It's talking about it. You know what I'm saying? So, it's just about how the movie is already made. You know what, right. what I'm saying? Because 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 it's usually the beat that's gonna take you somewhere first mm. than, than, than the lyrics and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So so it's usually uh first is usually the artist. Second, second, if, if the artist ain't really, you know, kind of got the vision, then, then that's when the producer come in. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. 
So everybody has to be a visionary mm -hmm. at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Whether you want to say it or not. But everybody is, is, is a visionary. And everybody have a creative mind as well, too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's just about tapping in and into that and, and trying to make a, a articulate and arch architect the blueprint mm -hmm. that's already there. You know what I'm saying? So if you got some like, uh, like, so if you got some like, uh, a, a little baby type beat, a little baby type beat, and um, and and and, and you kind of want to do something different. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you kind of, you kind of, you kind of got to tap into a space. You yeah. know what I'm saying to get the best out of the baby. But like with other people, you can kind of, um, you can kind of try to experiment with them. Like a lot of people you can experiment with. And be like, oh, this is so new. And what it do, it help them jump out their bag and jump out, jump out their uh, comfortability too. Mm -hmm. So where they, they can excel themselves to a different level. So that's what it is too. I feel like with me. When I'm sending these to people, they may not be the exact thing they want, mm -hmm. but I feel like it's something that can kind of they can experiment with. Yeah. Like, oh, I ain't, I ain't had this. Let me try to add this and implement this. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So you're trying to give them something to kind of like push them in a way too, yeah, out their comfort yeah. zone. Yeah, yeah. yeah kind of yeah. like I like that. So you, so is it like certain artists that you know that you can kind of like test? Like you be like, all right, let me send something here. You might be able to play with this, mm -hmm. or is it something like artists that you know like, nah, he has that that cap. Let me just send him like I know this is what he got. This is yeah. what I would do. Do you like? Do you have different artists where you kind of like decipher where you know like, all right, I'm sending him something. I know he'll try to play with it. Yeah. And then you got something you're like, nah, he's not even gonna try. Let me just send him what uh -huh. he needs. You yeah, got something yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got something like that. Uh, so usually when I usually I try to play the A, uh, a and R too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because because my aspirations is having a, a music label. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Being that I kind of do everything, but it's um it's having that A and R, having that ear to where you can discover talent too, mm -hmm. and not just be in your mind but like, oh, I'm the talent. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so where it's like um like with certain artists uh from here, like. With people that are doing the work with people like Ju, uh, Ron Obasi, uh, Nista, Nista Neff, mm -hmm. they got they, they they got they got certain certain flows and certain deliveries that that can just correspond well in different variety and different ranges of music. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And not just one little one little tuck, one cap. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah, with them like you can kind of you can kind of experiment with them because being that they want to develop themselves as artists and themselves too. And, and they career too. So with them, you can kind of, you kind of, yeah, maybe let me, let me, let me send them this, maybe a little different or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even if you haven't sent it to them, when you got the, you know, like sometimes I'll be like, I'll be making something like, alright, there's something, there's something they can, they can ride to. I know they can ride to, they can hop on, they can do something different to, some, some different than I would do, mm -hmm. even better. Because I feel like that's what, that's what the thing is. Like with a producer, you would just want the best out of an artist. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what I try to kind of focus on, even with myself. Like how can I take myself to that next level? With this beat, or with this sound, with this loop, with this drum, anything, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I like that. So you put like basically when you make a beat, you're like, nah, I'm trying to make all my beats count. Like For I sure. want this to For matter. Sure. Yeah. And all of them, all of them ain't gonna hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all of them ain't gonna hit. Yeah, that's a you fact. Mm -hmm. So it's just about continue continuously doing it, mm -hmm. being consistent with it. You know what I'm saying? So are you someone that takes more pride in quality than quantity? For sure. For sure. Like. Sometimes, like I got a song called "It's a Rap." Mm -hmm. um, I made it in my sister, uh, my sister bathroom at MTSU. <laughs> For sure, I was just in the mirror just rapping that joint. <laughs> but when I made the beat, I made that beat like two weeks prior to that. Mm -hmm. And like some beats, like where you gotta like just you gotta ride with it. Yeah. You gotta you gotta ride with it, be in a vibe with it until something comes. Just keep on playing it, like, just chill with it a little bit. You live with it for a minute. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Until something come. So it was like I was I was just I was just in there. I was just in there with my little brothers. They went to the pool. I was like, cool, I'm finna, I'm finna rap. <laughs> so so I took the mic and everything to the bathroom, small little bathroom too. And I was like, oh, the beat kept on playing. I was like, oh, it's a rap, it's a rap, it's a rap. I was like, oh, it's nice right here. Mm -hmm. So like, I got it, boom, right there. That's, that's that's the hook right there. So I put it down, I'm like, okay, bet. I can just orchestrate everything everything around the hook. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's dope, like just hearing your creative process and yeah, everything, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I wish I could make music. Just hearing that is just like, like man, like that. It, it makes it sound so easy, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For real. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it's like it's like time. It's just about you know the time. Like I said, I feel like everything is, is, is with timing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because if 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 I probably went there in that space, I probably wouldn't ever even had a song. True. You know what I'm saying? So like that's one thing my granny had told me too. She was like, you know, you gotta get out the house. You gotta do something different. <laughs> you gotta be inspired by the world. So I'm like, yeah, you feel me? So yeah, that's is where it, it come from. And hearing that, see, being inspired by the world, do you feel like with like social media right now, do you feel like a lot of people are not in touch with the world because mm. of it? Yeah, mm. well, for sure, because 
I learned that it's easier to be distracted mm. than to be what you what you uh, feel like you need to be. Or easier to be distracted and be focused. Mm -hmm. Cause a uh, distraction is, is constant things that keep on coming at you. Yeah. Being focused is like okay, let me move everything that's constantly coming at me. Or change my direction. Like we got blinders on, change my direction, put it over here. Mm -hmm. It's waiting on coming to me. And that's that's harder to do. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's harder to focus on something. Even like what y'all do, it's harder to focus on something when like I ain't doing this, somebody doing this, somebody doing this, somebody doing that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's it's about having that uh that conscious uh concentration. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's why I call it conscious concentration because you got to be aware of what you put in your concentration too. Your awareness too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Man, no, that's smart. Now you speak real facts, bro. For real, like you really giving some real gems out there. I hope they're paying attention. Like right? for real, for real. But um, well, on the music tip too. Before we go ahead, you know, just get out of it and everything. But like, what's like, what are some next steps for you, bro? Like, I know that you're saying like your aspirations. You know, to go ahead and have your own label and everything. So like, what are some things right now that you're doing to go ahead and put yourself on track? Um, uh, right now, man, I'm just, I'm really focused on my finances, financial right now. Yeah. Because I'm not trying to come in the game to where it's like, I don't know what this is, I don't know what that is. I want to come prepared as much as I can, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't really know. But being that my folks is kind of into it a little bit, it kind of give me give me a head start, give me give me a push, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I, I, I learn stuff from them, and then like just just picking up on on things that I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. sometimes you have your days to where it's like. You know you gotta do this, mm -hmm. but you don't wanna do it. <laughs> yeah. But you gotta do it, you know what I'm saying? Because it's gonna help benefit you at the end of the day. Right. So right now it's pretty much just think, thinking, thinking long term, and mm -hmm. that's something I'm really trying to program my mind into doing. Mm -hmm. I ain't there just yet, but just think about the long term. You know what I'm saying? Like thinking, looking at myself like I'm probably 30, 40 years right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? 30, 40 years in advance, because, cause, cause. I know when we when we when we fail to do that, we fail to even think about the next day. Yeah. We always think about the moment right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So even, even think about the moment that right now we still fail to plan within the day. That's true. You know what I'm saying? So it's about planning and looking looking at what you want it to be in, in the next years. So for me, my aspirations and what I'm doing now is, is, is just trying to prepare and plan. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, put myself in a better position than I was in yesterday or last year. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But the music side is, is um it's coming with coming with different sounds, coming with different different ways to approach it. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm really focused on individuality. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cause I feel like you just gotta you just gotta have that. Yeah. So, I feel like that's gonna really help because everybody has that one thing about them that sure. separates it from sure. everybody. So sure. yeah, that's gonna hit yeah. you. So that's that's it right there. And then another aspiration is just being inspired. Mm -hmm. You can be inspired, you being open. And uh, that's something you can just always, that's gonna always bring your aspirations up anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, or even expanding your mind to different things. It's gonna always uh, expand your horizon. You expand your horizon, you expand your whole altitude, altitude of what you see. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So like I said, you ain't just looking at at, at, at the specific thing with your blinders on you. Open them up a little more. Oh, I ain't know this was there. Yeah. I ain't know that was on, I know them lights was right there. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I can see them, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So. Just going back on to my aspirations is um it's really um long term uh, developing myself now for who I want to be. Mm -hmm. uh, already portraying myself to be that person, mm -hmm. walking in that person. You know what I'm saying? Um, my father has the saying of putting on a coat. You know what I'm saying? You put on a coat, and uh, this is who you step out to be. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's me putting on that coat. And stepping out and being that person that I know I, I that, that I know I am. Cause for me, I have things up on the wall. I got things written on the wall, stuff like that, mm -hmm. already written. Like for me, I feel like my destiny is already written. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's just me coming, coming uh, face to face with that. You know what I'm saying? He he already there, and I'm already right here, just preparing myself for that moment. So when we meet, we can connect and we good. You know and you be prepared. Like that. Hell yeah. Man. I like that you had that outlook on life and everything, bro. Like, it's really, like, positive. And honestly, I feel like it's it'll be, like, really helpful for a lot of people to hear that. Because what you're saying is basically, like, everything is, like, timing. And I feel like a lot of people nowadays, because you get on social media, like you're saying, so distracted, you see, like, everybody, it makes it look like everybody woke up and they're rich, you know? Yeah, yeah. So you get very, like, dang, like, why is it not happening to me? Like, what I got to do? So you get in this this mode where you're just constantly chasing the next check or trying to figure out what's the next hustle to make you some money. Yeah, yeah. But when you come back to thinking about it like this, like I'm 
preparing myself, you know what I'm saying? It's timing, because I'm about sure. to come face to face with my destiny. All this stuff is already written in stone. Yeah, yeah. It just ain't my time yet. Yeah. So I feel like hearing that from you, like how you just explained it, a lot, that'll help a lot of people understand, like, it's, I got to slow down a little bit, yeah. restructure, you know what I'm saying? Just get my stuff in order so when I am ready, I'm prepared mm -hmm. to meet my destiny, like you said. Yeah, for bro. sure, for sure. For sure. And another thing is not moving on feeling. Yeah. A lot of times we move off feeling like, oh, I, wanna, I feel like doing this, I want to do that. Man. Yeah, it ain't at any time yet. You know what I'm saying? Even, mm -hmm. like, even, even the things that I'm speaking on, I'm still working as well because I'm human, I ain't perfect. Yeah. But, you know what I'm saying? And just throwing, it, throwing the, the perspective out, of course, like you said, it's going to help people. And then, like, um, knowing when you're ready is, is something that's like nothing that's going to happen overnight. You know what I'm saying? Like, it takes time to know, to know. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, like, usually when you know, Something it's like it's a stone like you know like I know this couch is a couch because it's a couch. It's a couch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you ain't got to second guess it. Right. <laughs> so like when you moving on feeling and stuff, it's like uh, it maybe not be a couch. Maybe I can pull it apart. Maybe this something I can just sit on right here. This yeah. this, this, this this chair right here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But when you put it together and you put everything together, you can re uh, construct it and you know. You know what I'm saying? It's like boom, here you go. I got you right here. It's it, it's ready for you. You know what I'm saying? I got you. So that's that's what it is too. You know what I'm saying? Man, nah, bro, that's, that's smooth, bro. Like, like you said, everything you saying, bro, that's you. You like, re, like, do you read a lot? <laughs> I, I do, but I'm, I'm, I'm observing. Uh, I'm observing. like, you got a different like. I haven't had like a really good conversation like this in a while. I'm just, I'm like, bro, you like read a lot, like, man. I, do, I, I like to read, but it's like just really just come from the world. Just me being open. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's good. So like, what's some things that you like to just do, like, and just get out in the world? You know what I'm saying? What's some things that open you up and inspire you? Um. Like I said, life, so pretty much everything, uh, the good and the bad, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? A lot of times the bad really inspire you to do some good things, of course. Yeah. But reading, uh, being with my family, I love being with my family. Mm -hmm. family or, or to do. Uh, being with my wife. Um, what else? I just like to take breaks. Take mm -hmm. breaks. At first when I got into music, I was like, I ain't taking no breaks. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you don't take breaks, it's like... You already putting your mindset on the road of destruction a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You you gonna you gonna automatic the real because a, a train can't keep on going. It, it gotta it yeah, gotta stop. stop. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Put stuff on board, chill for a minute, let the engine cool down, and get back running. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just going going fast, breaking through walls. You gonna hit that one wall, you can't break you can't through. Get through it. You know nice. what I'm saying? You gotta have that endurance to break through it too. Mm -hmm. So um, that right there, and just just being human. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? It's being human. Um, going through my wins and going through my losses. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's it, really. Yeah. So just life experience life is really. Life experience, yeah. Man. Reflect. I, I like to reflect a lot. Mm -hmm. I like to reflect a lot. Not not just because I got this phrase. I got this phrase. Uh, this quote is uh, to 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 reflect from the past is to grow from it. Mm -hmm. To dwell in your past is to stay in it. You know what I'm saying? So you can't grow if you're staying in it. Mm -hmm. You reflect on it. Okay, I seen this. I seen it. What I can do better? And I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a ten times it by, by looking at it right now, seeing what I did, change that, work on it right now to go through it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's a really good. I like that quote. I'm gonna have to write that down. I'm gonna have to have you text to me, bro. I already <laughs> sleep forgot the end it, but it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> But no, nah, I really like that, bro. You have a really good outlook on life, bro. Honestly, I feel like you got a lot of positivity coming your way. Like, I feel like, like you said, your destiny, I feel like you're going to come straight to your destiny really soon, bro. Just hearing your vibes and how you just come off and everything, bro. You're very humble. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is like a really great, great interview with me. Like, you know what I'm saying? You came on here, you chopped it up. I feel like I know you for real, like, you know? But you have a really good outlook on life, bro. And I feel like you said a lot today to help inspire and also motivate somebody else out here that may be in a position where they don't really know what's going on, where their destiny is going to be taking them. So I feel like you said a lot of helpful things today, for real, man, for sure. But before you get you up out of here, man, is there anybody you want to go ahead and give any special shout outs to or anybody back at the home? You know what I'm saying? Anybody? <laughs> uh, my family, bro. They, they support. They support for real. I can't even lie. Like, mm -hmm. they, they support like a motherfucker. Uh, my mom, my pop, my sister, my, 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 my wife, my, her family. You know what I'm saying? When they can. Um, my brothers, EJ, uh, Kobe Brennan. Uh, let me see. My cousins, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Every time I come around, they like, uh, I'm playing a song, they be fucking with it. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, 
Shout out to God for sure. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Waking me up. Uh, and then a lot of things people don't do, but I like I like give some to myself too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cause I even feel like a conceited type thing, but like you know, it's something that you gotta continue doing every day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Put faith in, put your belief in. And some days it ain't like the others. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like some days I have my days where it's like I know I'm be the greatest. I'm be the greatest man. Fuck it, fuck all that. Mm -hmm. And then some days it's like, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's just a day, like, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. But you know, just it's, you gotta work to yourself sometimes. You keep mm -hmm. on going. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. That's it. Nah, that's a fact, bro. And shout out to y'all for, for having you. Know oh, man, no. Nah, shout out to you, bro, for even, you know, coming and locking in with us, bro. We appreciate it, for real. But, nah, bro, it was definitely dope, man. We can't wait to hear some more music and everything that's coming in the future, bro. If you don't mind, go ahead and drop a, your, uh, tell us your Instagram and everything, man. Oh, man, uh, social media, everything. I think it's on Twitter. Uh, Forever Low Key. That's F-O-R-E-V-E-R-L-O-W-K-R-Y. Forever Low Key. On social, uh, Instagram, I believe it's Fabulo Key on Twitter too. Uh, I, I I yet to have a Twitter like that. Mm -hmm. no, 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 I'm saying uh, YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, but I believe I believe the YouTube is uh low key too. L O W U K I Y in all caps. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Yeah, bro, you gotta get on that YouTube, bro. I got to, bro. You gotta <laughs> get on YouTube, bro. <laughs> you get true. you got the free beat, man. You just yeah, go, yeah. they go crazy, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man, I appreciate you coming out here and chopping up with me on real talk, man, for real. We're going to get you on here again, bro, for real. I got you, I got you. All right, we out, man. Let's do it.